the two great passions of my life have been poetry and psychoanalysis. I think nowhere do these passions come together more than in the confessional poets of the 60s. Sylvia Plath, Robert Lowell, John Berryman, Anne Sexton, and one or two minor poets. But these are the main poets of the time. And um, I think it's very unfortunate that um, confessional poetry has somehow died the death as far as contemporary criticism is concerned. The psychoanalysis too is no longer a treatment of choice because it is difficult, complex and usually time consuming. But I think that um, of all the poets I like Lowell the best. I think he, his work is a more sustained and powerful and um, by what I gather Lowell was not he was uh, part of the Lowell family which was a very important family in American history but only um, <laughs> a minor member of a minor branch but um, his power as a poet and his um, like Pound he was very um, contentiously political though in a very different way he was a conscientious objector and uh, for this he went to prison, not actually for very long. Uh, most conscientious objectors would go to prison for three or four years. In fact, Lowell was only in a real prison for three or four days, then he was transferred to uh, an open prison because of his political connections with the Lowell family. But nevertheless, in uh, that time, he wrote one of his most famous poems, um, Memories of West Street and Lepke. Lepke was a, a contract killer. Um, only teaching on Tuesdays. Bookworming in pyjamas, fresh from the washer each morning. I hog a whole house on Boston's hardly passionate Marlborough Street, where even the man scavenging filth in the back alley trash cans has two children, a beach wagon, a helpmate, and is a young Republican. I have a nine months daughter, young enough to be my granddaughter. Like the sun, she rises in her flame flamingo infant's wear. These are the tranquilised fifties, and I am forty. Ought I to regret my seed time? I was a fire-breathing Catholic CO, and made my manic statement, telling off the state and president, and then sat waiting sentence in the bullpen beside a negro boy with curlicues of marijuana in his hair. Given a year, I walked on the roof of the West Street Jail, a short enclosure like my school soccer court, and saw the Hudson River once a day, through sooty clothesline entanglements and bleachy khaki tenements, strolling a yammered metaphysics with Abramowitz, a jaundice yellow, it's really tan, and flyweight pacifist, so vegetarian he wore rope shoes and preferred fallen fruit. He tried to convert Beoff and Brown, the Hollywood pimps, to his diet. Hairy, muscular suburban, wearing chocolate double-breasted suits, they blew their tops and beat him black and blue. I was so out of things I'd never heard of Jehovah's Witnesses. Are you a CO? I asked a fellow jailbird. No, he answered, I'm a JW. He taught me the hospital tuck and pointed out the t-shirted back of murder incorporated Tsar Lepke, there piling towels on a rack or dawdling off to his little segregated cell full of things forbidden to the common man, a portable radio, a dresser, two toy American flags tied together with a ribbon of Easter palm. Flabby ball lobotomized, he drifted in a sheepish calm where no agonising reappraisal jarred his concentration on the electric chair, hanging like an oasis in his air of lost connections. It's very difficult to know which of his many good poems is his greatest, but I think that certainly is a, a very, very powerful poem. This poem, Skunk Hour, dedicated to his friend Elizabeth Bishop, 
is one that um, was submitted to a, a panel of other poets, including John Berryman, for their um, ideas on what the poem signified. And, and, and Lowell said himself he was <laughs> very impressed and interested uh, by what was said. But one doesn't get the feeling that he himself actually agreed with these uh, very complex um, readings of the poem. Skunk Hour Nautilus Island's hermit, Eris, still lives through winter in a Spartan cottage. Her sheep still graze above the sea. Her son's a bishop. Her farmer is first selectman in our village. She's in a dotage. Thirsting for the hierarchic privacy of Queen Victoria's century, she buys up all the eyesores facing her shore and lets them fall. The season's ill. We've lost our summer millionaire who seemed to leap from an L.L. Bean catalogue. His nine, not yawl, was auctioned off to lobstermen. A red stain fox covers Blue Hill. And now our fairy decorator brightens his shop, shop for fall. His fishnets filled with orange cork. Orange, his cobbler's bench and all. There's no money in his work he'd rather marry. One dark night, my Tudor Ford climbed the hill's skull. I watch for love cars, lights turned down. They lay together hull to hull, where the graveyard shelves on the town. My mind's not right. A car radio bleats, love, oh careless love. I hear my ill spirit sob in each blood cell, as if my hand were at its throat. I myself am hell. Nobody's here, only skunks that search in the moonlight for a bite to eat. They march on their souls up Main Street, white stripes, moonstruck eyes, red fire, under the chalk dry and sparse spire of the Trinitarian Church. I stand on top of our back steps and breathe the rich air. A mother skunk with her columns of kittens swills the garbage pail. She jabs her wedge head in a cup of sour cream, drops her ostrich tail and will not scare. I think the poem at the time which interested me most was Waking Early Sunday Morning. I think I read it in the London magazine. And, and um, it is actually very different from a lot of his other poems. His kind of um, joy in life is not something that Lowell is particularly famous for. Waking early Sunday morning. Oh, to break loose, like the Chinook salmon jumping and falling back, nosing up to the impossible stone and bone-crushing waterfall, Raw-jawed, weak-fleshed there, stopped by ten steps of the roaring ladder, and then to clear the top on the last dry. Alive enough to spawn and die. Stop back off, the salmon breaks water, and now my body wakes to feel the unpolluted joy and criminal leisure of a boy. No rainbow smashing a dry fly, in the white run is free as I. Here squatting like a dragon on time's hoard before the day's begun. Vermin run for their unstopped holes. In some dark nook a field mouse rolls. A marble, hours on end, then stops. The termite in the woodwork sleeps. Listen. The creatures of the night, obsessive, casual, sure of foot. Go on grinding while the sun's daily remorseful blackout dawns. Fierce, fireless mind. Running downhill, look up and see the harbour fill. Business as usual in eclipse, goes down to the sea in ships. Wake of refuse, dacre and rope, bound for Bermuda or good hope. All bright before the morning watch, the wine-dark hulls of yawl and ketch. I watch a glass of water, wet with a fine fuzz of icy sweat. Silvery colours touch with sky, serene in their neutrality. Yet if I shift or change my mood, I see some object made of wood, background behind it of brown grain to darken it but not to stain. Oh, that the spirit could remain, tinged but untarnished by its strain, better dressed and stacking birch, or lost with the faithful at church, 
anywhere but somewhere else. And now the new electric bells clearly chiming faith of our fathers. And now the congregation gathers. O oh, Bible chopped and crucified in hymns we hear but do not read. None of the milder subtleties of grace or art will sweeten these. Stiff quatrains shovelled out for square. They sing of peace and preach despair. Yet they gave darkness some control and left a loophole for the soul. No, put old clothes on and explore the corners of the woodshed for its dregs and dreck. Tools with no handle, ten candle ends not worth a candle. Old lumber banished from the temple, damned by Paul's precept and example. Cast from the kingdom, banned in Israel, the wordless sign, the tinkling symbol. When will we see him face to face? Each day he shines through darker glass. In this small town where everything is known, I see his vanishing emblems, his white spire and flagpole sticking out above the fog, like old white, white china doorknobs, sad, slight useless things to calm the man. Hammering military splendour, top-heavy Goliath in full armour, little redemption in the mass liquidations of their brass, Elephant and phalanx moving, with the times and still improving, when that kingdom hit the crash, a million foreskins stacked like trash, sing softer. But what if a new diminuendo brings no true tenderness, only restlessness, excess, the hunger for success, sanity of self-deception, fixed and kicked by reckless caution, while we listen to the bells anywhere but somewhere else? Oh, to break loose! All life's grandeur is something like it with a girl in summer, elated as the president, girdled by his establishment. This Sunday morning, free to chaff, his own thoughts with his bare cuff staff, swimming nude and buttoned, sick of his ghost-written rhetoric. No weekends for the gods now. Wars flicker. Earth licks its open sores. Fresh breakage, fresh promotions. Chance assassinations, no advance. Only man thinning out his kind. Sound through the Sabbath noon. The blind swipe of the pruner and his knife. Busy about the tree of life. Pit of the planet, all joy gone. From this sweet volcanic cone. Peace to our children when they fall. In small war on the heels of small war. Until the end of time. To police the earth. A ghost orbiting forever lost. On our monotonous sublime. What I feel about Lowell is that he was never frightened to tackle the big issues. War, peace, pacifism, madness. These themes his, 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 his massive collected poems are resonant with. There's virtually nothing of Lowell's I dislike. I, I don't think I particularly warm to his very early poems, like the, the, the Quaker Graveyard in Nantucket, which seems rather heavy with, 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 with um, very simple rhyme schemes. But after that, once he got into his stride, he wrote magnificently. Sadly, he died quite young of a, of a heart attack, uh, probably brought on by his huge indulgence in medication for his psychotic illness. But it was a very, very sad day when the Western world lost one of its greatest poets, Robert Lowell. Certainly an influence on me and an influence on all who I know and who've loved poetry, as hopefully some of us still do.